Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay, you guys here, welcome back. Video number two, we're gonna hit the next section which is going to be what the heck was going on with Netflix and Harry and the Invictus Games. Here we go. All right, now we're gonna move on to Netflix and what was going on last year with Netflix, okay? So bear with me, this all comes together. Netflix lost over 200,000 global subscribers in the first quarter this year and was warned that they could lose millions, their shares fell 23%. Now, why do you guys think that happened? Now, Netflix is claiming two things, that people are password sharing, and that's what's creating the issues. No, I don't think 200,000 people are password sharing. And also, that it's a post-COVID slump. Again, that makes no sense to me, because during COVID, when you're in your house, that's when you need Netflix. You know, what gets me is they've raised their prices and they're losing money hand over fist as they just spent millions for this special for Harry and Meghan, which I don't think is going to make back the money that they're hoping it will. Just think about all the money they spent on hotels and cameramen and clothing and makeup and hairstylists to try to make this, uh, this thing that Harry and Meghan are trying to make and it's going to flop. Could you imagine? They'll never get, they'll, they'll never make up that money again. It'll be interesting to see if they can rally because from what I've been told, they have now increased their prices. So people that still wanted to watch Netflix now have to pay more money for it. That might actually force some people, more people to quit Netflix. Now, Elon Musk, I showed you the tweet that he put out about how the woke mind virus is making Netflix unwatchable. And the thing that he was referring to was apparently a show called Bridgerton, which is a costume drama that uses colorblind casting and is supposedly their most popular English language show. Yeah. So now the mantra is going out that says, go woke, go broke. Now, while all of this is going on, Netflix has decided now it's also going to look at its super expensive deals to see if there are any value for the money. Right? So like for instance, they, they signed a $112 million deal with Harry and Meghan, but they haven't put out any programming in two years. And the Heart of Invictus docuseries isn't gonna be out for some time. Now Meghan's mole said that, you know, Meghan Markle has no business being involved with Invictus. And I think somebody heard her. If you look at this IMDB online, you know, it lists everybody. Um, Meghan is not on the list here as executive director. She's not on the list for production management. She's not on the list for the director of the series. She's not on the list as a cast member of the series. They literally have just removed her. And now the articles are coming out that the two of them have to put on a united front in Germany to make this work with Invictus. The problem is um, they're exploiting disabled veterans for cash. Absolutely. Let me go back in time just a little bit to last year's Invictus. For instance, this photo that came up, look at this gentleman standing behind Harry. He can't even get Harry's attention. But let me show you what was going on behind the scenes, okay? Just let's trip down memory lane. Now, these are multiple clips from multiple videos that cover Netflix, covers Invictus, it covers Megan's outfits, it covers the Sussex Squad. So let's just get in there and watch, shall we? Let's go. He's talking, she's looking around, trying to look like she's interested. Notice at the bottom of the screen, the Netflix camera that's trained on them. Megan's playing with her hair. This is what they're doing, I'm telling you. See right off the bat, the Netflix cameras. Look over Megan's shoulder. There's the camera. Look at this picture. Right between them. There's the camera. And a big boom. There's a better shot of the boom going over their head so that everything that's said could be captured for the Netflix documentary. And for me, that makes this entire thing very disingenuous. It's all for show. It's all for money for Netflix. It's not real. I, I just think they've really brought it 
I don't know how to say it. They've really damaged the Invictus brand. I just, nothing is real. It's all just for money. So when she came out from the reception, she, you know, that they were in, she did that creepy thing where she immediately spotted the camera and she's looking up and smiling. We, you, you guys, we know all about that. Somehow, no matter where the camera is, she can find it. It's just creepy. So as I was just saying, the Netflix crew was literally scampering around after them everywhere they went, no matter what they were doing, no matter who they were talking to, lots of photos. And here, in case you missed it, as they were walking in with all of those people, there was the Netflix crew. Watch this. Now everybody's pointed out, as you can see in these pictures above, this big rounded belly thing that Megan's got going on. And now people are going, ooh, I wonder if she's pregnant. People, she's not pregnant. This outfit didn't fit her. As usual, it's not well tailored to her. It's hanging on her like a sack. So her outfit cost 3,200 pounds. The bag was 2,200 pounds. The shoes were probably about 1,000 pounds. So you're looking at 6,400 pounds or almost $8,400. Now that's just for the clothes. That's not including the jewelry. Of course, she's wearing the tank watch again, which is worth like $30,000. And she's got her engagement ring and she's wearing other gold necklaces and stuff because she's merching. But that's what's going on here. Normally, Megan wears ridiculously expensive clothing and she wears ridiculously expensive jewelry. I noticed on this trip so far, she seems to have toned it down a bit. Maybe she realizes that she comes off as pretentious and obnoxious. Anyway, so she's definitely copying Catherine when it comes to the jewelry. Now, I don't pay attention to the cost of the engagement rings and, and earrings that she wore to her wedding. I don't pay attention to those because I just feel like that's... You know, Catherine wore her wedding uh, ring and, you know, that kind of stuff. But she's definitely picked up Catherine's style when it comes to wearing inexpensive jewelry. So she's merching stuff like the hand chain, which, by the way, is $238. And she's, you know, I mean, she's wearing stuff that normally she wouldn't wear. And she's trying to get it. So look at the necklace she's wearing. $374. And it celebrates enduring love. Now... Considering what she wore on her quote-unquote royal tour to New York, it's pretty obvious at this point that she's taking a leaf out of Catherine's book, especially when we saw Catherine wearing earrings that were a big whopping $70. To the athletic field, and Megan is wearing jeans, high heels, and a white trench coat of some sort. I don't, I don't know how you would call that. But interestingly enough, you're on an athletic field where people are running track and, you know, and she's in five inch spiked heels. I, I mean, I just, I don't get it. What was her stylist thinking? So anyway, she's running around on the field and she's taking pictures with the teams and she's, you know, posing for the Netflix cameras, which were there before anybody says they weren't. They most certainly were. And I'm about to show you. Okay, FYI, I, I have to bring this up as well. It appears that Megan had a bunch of Botox done. Look at her forehead. Like it doesn't, she's trying to raise her eyebrows and yeah, nothing. <laughs> like nothing at all. I just, I'm sorry. I had to bring that up because it was just so obvious. So anyway, she's doing her walk down the track field and you know, all right, go this way, go that way. Make sure we get a couple of pictures. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Whatever. You know, let's finish posing. She's got the two-handed grip on him again. Did you guys see that? The claw has returned. Okay, moving on. Of course, being the animal lover that she is, she had to get a photo with the dog. And then, you know, they continue with the pictures. Now, here's the point to all of this. When you go to an athletic, oh, and one other thing, she's giving him that funky look again. Remember, we've seen the love bombing look. Look, <laughs> I can't help myself, y'all. Look, she's the love bombing look. Okay, so anyway, when you go to a track and field, you know, thing, you don't wear a $2,200 trench coat. No, you should be wearing that, the Invictus shirt, which she wore at a previous Invictus because there's a picture of it from several years ago, but I guess she's outgrown it. And if you guys had any doubt that this was all for show with the clothing and the cameras, watch this and check out the Netflix camera to the right.
Then it was on to the floor volleyball. And of course, Harry and Megan got an up front seat and they're doing the pointing thing and the ooing and the eyeing. And isn't this just amazing? And I mean, let's face it, they are amazing, but I don't need these two to tell me how amazing they are. There's a lot of weird stuff going on here <laughs> in these photos. I, I just can't. And yes, she found the camera. Hmm. Now, while Harry was at archery, I think it was, Megan did a quick outfit change and went to the British tent. I believe this is where she was reading her book. And of course, she copied Diana's outfit while she was doing this. Mm hmm. Oh, by the way, this picture, she painted the flag incorrectly. She, she probably should have Googled it, you know, since there was nobody there to train her. Hmm. And those pictures, by the way, were taken by her personal photographer. I'm surprised he didn't go, <coughs> you know, like turn the page over, or, you know, whatever. So people were really, yeah, they were really not happy with what she did. And they put things like she doesn't even know where the Ukraine is. And don't be unfair, she had two colors to choose from, and it's not as if Ukraine hasn't been in the news. Well, I hate to point this out, but doesn't she have a degree in international studies? I, why, and why would she not know that? Okay, so she made a mistake. Why not just say I made a mistake? Instead, you've got Scooby-Doo coming out saying, not having a clue what an upside down flag means. Um, okay, so tell us what does an upside down flag mean? What does it mean? He didn't put the description because, yeah. First of all, flying a flag upside down in the United States, and I would assume any other country, is considered disrespectful. The only time that you're really supposed to do it is if you are in severe distress, like life-threatening distress. Is Scooby-Doo saying that she's in life-threatening distress as she's sitting there painting the Ukrainian flag while she's surrounded by armed bodyguards? Like, what is that? Just Curious pointed out that Megan didn't have to Google the flag. She could have just looked at the kid next to her. Okay, we're going to stop here. Now you guys need to follow me on to video number three. And then that's when you get into the whole Invictus Sussex Squad connection, okay? So come on, you guys. Video number three. Let's go.